Alright, in this video I'm going to teach you how to make a quick little saving leaderboard for lead stats just like here. So, the first thing we want to do is open up our game in Roblox Studio. And now we're in here, first thing we need to do, add a script in Serve Script Service. And I am going to call this script Leader Stats Script. So now we can start coding our leaderboards. First of all, we're going to need to get the data store service. How we can do that is local data store service equals game colon get service data store service. And now we're going to need to get the data store itself. So local main data store equals data store service colon get data store main store. You can call this whatever you like. And then we need to get HTTP service. So how we can do that is local HTTP equals game colon get service HTTP service. Right, now we need to decide what data we actually want to appear on this leaderboard. So in the game I just showed you, uh, we had stage and rebirth, I think. So we're going to make a table, first of all. We're going to decide what data we want to save. So local default data equals, and then open up a table. And then in here, we're going to add some data. So for the first item, square brackets. And then some speech marks and in here i'm going to say let's say coins equals five and then we can say maybe rebirths equals five right so now we've got our default data we're going to need an event for when the player joins the game so game dot players dot player added colon connect function and then in these brackets we want to take the player object and the first thing we want to do is create the folder itself for the leaderboard. So how we do that is local folder equals instance.new folder and then a comma and then player because we want to put it in the player. And then this is this bit is important. We have to set the folder name, so folder.name to exactly this. It can't be anything else, right? You've got to call it leader stats, spell exactly like that. No capitals or anything, exactly like that. Right, so now we're going to make the values for our coins and our rebirths. You can do this for as many items as you like, but I'm just going to keep those two for now. So local coins equals instance dot new int value, because we want it to be a whole number, and then a comma, and then we want to put this in our folder, so comma folder, and then we want to set the name of it, so coins dot name equals coins. And then we can just do the same thing for our rebirths, so copy and paste that, change this to rebirths, and then I'm just going to copy that like so and now we've got our values we want to actually get the data itself so how we're going to do that first of all is make a variable called data so local data and then we're going to go down two lines and we're going to say local success colon error equals p call function now this is just so that if our this data store runs into a problem it won't crash our script so now what we're going to try and do is get some data from the main data store so how we can do that is local player data equals main data store colon get async and a pair of brackets and player dot user id so what this is doing is it's getting the data that has been stored as the player's user id and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if player data then we want to decode this data because it's stored as a json so how we can do that is player data equals http colon json decode and then in these brackets we want to put the player data and then we want to say data equals player data but what do we do if this player data hasn't been found well just change this end to else and open it up and we're just going to set the data equal to this table we created earlier so default data right now we're done with this, we can set the values of coins and rebirths. So how we can do that is coins.value equals data and then square brackets and these speech marks and then coins. And then for rebirths, we're going to do rebirths.value equals data rebirths. Right, another thing we've, we need to add, which I've forgotten, is we have to say if error, then data equals default data. Right now, if we test our game, we will see that there's been an error because we've not yet allowed Studio to access this data store. However, we have got our coins and rebirths on the leaderboard with our default values as set before. But now we've got them to load, we need to get them to save when the player leaves the game. 
So how we can do that, if I zoom out a little bit, is we need an event for when the player leaves. So how we can do that is game.players.player, removing, form and connect, function. And in here, we want to take a player object again. And now we want to craft this table with the values from the player. So I'm just going to copy and paste this table, copy the table from up here, paste it down in this event here. And we're going to change the numbers here. So coins equals, and then we're going to change this to equal player dot leader stats dot coins dot value. And then we're going to change the rebirths to equal to player dot leader stats dot rebirths dot value. And if you've created different values, like I said, you could earlier, you want to make sure that this matches up to here and that this matches up to whatever you've called your int values. Right, now we've got our data here. We want another pcall function, so local success. I want error equals pcall function. And then open up this function. And first of all, we want to encode our data because we can't save it as a table. We need to save it as JSON string. So how we can do that is local data equals HTTP colon JSON encode. And in these brackets, we want to put our data table, but I'm just going to change this name by the way now from default data to player data. And then I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to chuck it in these brackets here. Right now we've got our encoded data. What we're going to do is save it to our data store. So that's our main data store. So how we can save it is main data store colon set async. And then in these brackets, we need the key, which remember we had the key from earlier. That was the player's user ID. So I just put the player's user ID in there and then a comma. And now we need to put in the value. So this is going to be our encoded data. So just type in data. And now it's going to try and save it to our data store. So now we want to print out if there's an error. So if error, then warn error. All right, cool. Now our script's all done. What we're going to need to do is before we test the game, before we play the game, we need to allow the game to actually use the data stores. So how we can do that is go into our game settings here, go down to security, and make sure Enable Studio Access to API Services is on. So turn that on and click Save. Right, now we can test our game, so just click Play. And now we're in here, we can see that our coins and rebirths are working. And now I'm just going to go onto the server and change some of the values in our player that we set in this leader stats folder. So I'm going to give us 15 coins, and I'm going to give us 10 rebirths. And then I'm going to go ahead and kick our player from the game. Squidding's colon kick. What this is going to do is it's going to keep kick the player but keep the server running so that makes sure that studio doesn't like break our script or anything so if i just run that i have now been kicked from the game although it's not loading i can't move so now what we're going to do is just stop the game and then hopefully when we load back in again you can see we've got our coins and rebirth as we saved them before so that was how you can make a saving leaderboard in roblox studio if you found this helpful then please subscribe get me back in the youtube algorithm i am begging at this point Anyways, see you in the next one.